Okay, so Alice is Alice Bailey. She was, I had inspirations of the I Ching astrology and how these things came together from doing a lot of meditation. And then her works from the 70s were very inspiring. They dealt with the light and the dark force, the force of light, the force of darkness, and the inspirations. And they were, a lot of them were written during the Second World War. And they were powerful things against the injustices that were going on in the world at the time. When you read them, whoa, they're really affirming or really challenging. But they're rarely can you read them indifferently. You know, they have special teaching, powerful words. So in looking at her, 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 her chart, she had, she lived a fairly religious life. She was part of a church, she was part of different churches, and she lived a very, she, she was around preachers and teachings all her life. Okay, so it wasn't until later that she got special inspirations and started to hear voices from masses and brought through these teachings that were a little bit more intense than just what the churches are putting up. It wasn't really in conflict. Just new and alive, and not within the social acceptances of how the communities were working. So it was challenging. Okay, so this is her chart. Everything's on one side. When you have a chart like this called a bull chart, you're either, everything's either with you or against you. You're getting yourself together and you get all this information you get, so you can pour it over to the other house, the other half. And so she would get all her knowledge and all her ideas together and put it out to make it reach to, to get it out to other people. She would have done that. It's something in her own spirit. Because she could do that, the masters probably chose her as a vehicle to express things for her. And then she would take it further where most people would. Some people get it and then, oh, they don't hold to it. She, once she got it, she burnt it her life. And she worked her life and worked with it forever to build up the Lucas Trust, build up things, build up the books, get these things published. This is all before computers. This is a lot of work. So, okay, this is, that's her, her chart. She's a Gemini with a Libra moon, and she had a Leo rising. So, I'm not going to go further. We can go. This is her chart from the heliocentric viewpoint. So if you look at a heliocentric chart, you look at the sun set from the sun instead of from the earth. You take out the houses, all your senses have for this, all your money concerns, your health concerns, relation, all these, get rid of all of that. And the moon, there's no moon in the heliocentric chart, so you get rid of your memories. So how, if you don't talk about worldly circumstances and memories, what's left? Okay, so, <coughs> but from here, I'm sorry, I'll just show you, just take a second. There's the earth. So her chart all on one side, you can see it from there, but when you look from the sun, all the planets were around her. And you can see from the planets, you can see different attitudes. The planets affect the houses and the affairs of their life and the cross, but when you start looking at the quality of the sun, you see the attitudes towards them. You see them, the refinement you can make and how you can evolve the quality of thinking, the quality of evaluating, the quality of your confidence, the quality, even the quality of your memories, what you choose to remember. Why did you remember that? Meet somebody, I remember when you did that, oh my, great. You know, like, I do pretty good until someone starts talking to one of my ex-wives and all of a sudden, uh-oh, I'm, so I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not quite the person I remember that I was. You know, so like, we all have our real story, it's just whatever. You know, whatever got, you know, but this is just another frequency in astrology that's starting to come in. I'm seeing the heliocentric or the more soul-centered chart around it, okay. Okay, this is a printout that just took the, took the position of Alice Bailey's son, 29 degrees Gemini, 25 degrees Gemini, 29 minutes. And it prints out the position, this is the calculation, but it's giving the, hex, the, the sun, the house, the, the hexagrams. There's three hexagrams, one inside the other. There's a main hexagram, there's a, a, special, a, a special focus in the detail. So there's three levels you can interpret this one. We're just going to talk on the first, so go to the next. Yeah, this is sort of the three levels, main theme, special focus. So there's a whole, this line has a special meaning, and then there's a whole other hexagram that further elaborates that meaning, and then there's a line in this hexagram that further elaborates that meaning. So what you're really doing is you've got, you know, I have hours, minutes, and seconds, and you have nations and provinces, national, provincial, and municipal governments. You know, so it's kind of like this three levels. But we're just going to be dealing with the main theme for right now. So. This, her, her son, this is 
this is one of my part of my book, a page out of my book on Ching and astrology. It's too many pages. It took 40 years to write. It's uh, got about 3,500 pages to it. It's, it's also CDs in the back there. So, but it's you're getting an encyclopedia of all kinds of things. It's, gonna, it's something you work through forever. You're not going to read it from cover from the beginning to the end. But here you see the colors, the rays going around. There is another one for the houses where the colors spiral the other way. If you're watching it come down into the world, but each this is the pattern of the colors based on the six colors. The first one, the red, there's a well power. The fifth ray comes in the second, the, or, the orange. Fifth ray, the third ray is the yellow. The fourth ray is beauty and art. Is the is the um, Libra. The love wisdom ray is the blue, and the devotion ray is the purple in the, in the burgundy. So this puts the this puts the chorus. You see the hexagram. She's born at the time of greatest brightness, the greatest light, brightest time of the year, the most independent thinking time of the year. It's the last person you would think to be a medium. You would never think she'd be a medium. She's got to be thinking her own thoughts and going it. And she grew up in the church with preachers, with teachers. She's been around mystical teachings all her life. But something happened, and she heard the voice, and heard the master, and brought in the and she started just letting it come through, and let a bigger word, a higher word, come through in her teachings. Quite incredible. So that her tri in her horoscope, that her son, her purpose was in this point of the creative, it's in the teaching they call it the creative, the creative, the father, heaven. This is the symbol of all. The, this is the Father on earth, Father on heaven, the three above, three below. So our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. There's, there it is, right? And that correspondence from a Chinese side. So she's going to have her son, each one line is one degree. She's going to have her son in one of these hexagrams, one of these lines. So you have this theme of the creative, of being creative, being independent, standing on your own, doing your own thing, which she did. And um, that she'll have one of the rules. <coughs> We'll be here. The seventh ray is the whole hexagram. That's the main thing. Everyone for a week has that. But her son is in the fifth, in the in this line of the, uh, this fifth line is in the ray of love wisdom. So her heart and her soul power coming through love wisdom. Okay. So this is just a closer look at some of these. The creative heaven above the the bottom three lines above the father, below the father, just above and below interpretations in it, but really our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be the name of creative one <coughs> as above, so below. It's all light. But in that all light there's not much, much, much it's not a reflective nature. So her vision came in, she became the medium, but she just didn't listen, it came through and she brought it out in the books right away. She put it out, she made things happen right away. She went with it immediately. She didn't have to reflect on it. She knew the source. <coughs> Okay, so yeah, this is just each of the sections. This this works for 23, 24 to 30 degrees Gemini in the northern hemisphere. That's June 15th to June 21st. In southern hemisphere, it's December 16th to December 22nd. It's just yeah, these are more technical. Time of day 11:36 to 11:60. So just before noon, uh, there's aspects of moon phase. So it's we're in this creative moon phase right now during this whole workshop is in this hexagon of the creative, the powerful words. Like in the world, if we just took the moment and did the chart for now, we would be talking about the same hexagon. And it would have gone through the lines as we started. It would go through lines, we would be tuned into the same thing. So it was kind of coincidence, okay? How are we doing for time? Yeah, 10 minutes. Perfect, okay. So this is some of the interpretations that we've done in the this is really my interpretation. I, and I rewrote the I Ching from the divisions. The I Ching is based on the superior man. The superior man does this, the superior man does that. It really means the superior individual, whether you're male or female. It's your higher moral conscience. But because it was tied up in this politics, and then it, it played into the balance of just be harmonious, don't mess with the system. Just be harmonious. It's easy for governments to support it. In China, it was on for thousands of years. It probably survived because of that. But really, I did it as each person's an individual. We have our, I took out the superior man, and I just put your higher self. I just took out that 
dialogue and it took it changed the whole thing a lot. So I didn't translate, I just wrote it from I wrote one paragraph a day after meditating an hour and it took about ten years to get through this. And I didn't even think about it when I was doing it. So you could say it was mediumed, but it was just coming through and then finally it got done. So this is so the first symbol is measuring what the three lines above and three lines above. Because each of the three lines is a family, it's a nuclear family. Three son lines the mother, the father, three brother lines the mother. Then you have three daughters and three sons. Then you have the natural nuclear family. China went tremendously against its own basic mysticism when they started controlling the family and not allowing, only allowing one kid. It made a horrendous change in its mysticism. Because all of its mysticism was based on the family. The perfect family was three daughters, three sons and three daughters. So, but, um, so heaven above, heaven below, strength above and below, firm within and without, there will be much to say, confidence and freedom, one will act and laugh. Gemini's have the gift of laughter. They can look at the worst thing in the world, they go, ha ha, they got something funny to say about it. They're not going to stay worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's only when they get hurt in their heart that they get nasty. They start being really mean. So, um, Trump is a Gemini. So he's got, Pluto just went through, went, went opposed Gemini in the last 20 years. So he's got this, a lot of Gemini's have this dark side. They didn't take God. They took the dark side and they have this negative mental judgment on things. And it's a harshness and it's there, but it's a fear. It's really a fear of not being open enough. I gotta explain this, I gotta explain this. Don't explain it, just be quiet. And we'll really be here. What an insult to a Gemini. Just say that, right? <laughs> so, okay. Go ahead to the next one. So this is, then there's an image. Each trigon, this is, the, the three song lines is the Father, the Heaven, our Father who art in Heaven, the creativity. So, great light in the heavens, creative strength, the way of freedom. There is no room for doubt or compromise here. Actions follow thoughts. Noble thoughts, noble actions. There's no sensitivity here. Practice what you preach. Seize the moment. Well, Alice Bailey had to put up with a lot of bad preachers, or semi-good preachers. And when she got pushed beyond it and was seen more clearly than the people around her, she had to start her own, her own group, her own teachings, and put up the books and do it, and she just did it. And we're grateful because she got it. She got it to us. It brought to us something. But she just, um, let's see, back to we seize the moment. She did, if you cannot make your ideas real now, when will you? If you are wrongly aligned, you need to find out. <coughs> Push, assert yourself, make it happen. If you get an idea, put it to the test. Let it live or die. Get it over with. The way of individual strength prevails. If you have something to prove, prove it. To champion a, world, a worthy cause is noble indeed. Anything less invites collapse and failure. Who can hold the world on their back? And for how long? Truth fights ignorance. That, that could almost sum up her writing. Like she wrote a book on the Treatise of White Magic. But her book on the stuff on, 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 on the labors of Hercules, the last book she wrote in her life, and she did, her students finished it, was about Hercules' soul and the lessons the soul has going through his constellation of the zodiac. So, very useful. Um, but you go around the zodiac many times, many times before you're ready, you can take the soul's path. You have to, when you're ready, you go. No one's, no one's saying, okay, you're okay now. When you let go, you open, it happens. So, okay, next one. 